administrative things. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Selectmen's meeting on April 10th. Uh, Mr. Pinio, do we have a need for non-public this evening? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. We do uh, three items, RSA 91A3, lowercase b, uh, two items under employment, and lowercase c, one item under reputation. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear the second one, Jim. C, lowercase c, reputation. And did you say the first one was B? B, employment. Okay. Yep. Okay, next on the agenda is our reorganization for the Board of Selectmen. Um, we'll start off with a nomination for, for a new chair. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we nominate Linda Murray for chairman. Second. Motion a second to nominate Linda. Are there any other uh, nominations? See none will close nominations for chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Linda. And next is going to be nomination for vice chair for the 2024-25 like, season. I'd like to uh, nominate Dave Senegal for vice chair. And I'd like to second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Linda to nominate Dave for vice chair. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll close nominations. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, consideration of the minutes for March 14th. It was a special meeting that we had. Any comments, corrections? I'll make a motion to accept as written. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian to accept as written. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention. Next are the minutes for March 20th. I have one on page five. It is one, two, three, four, fifth sentence from the bottom. The deputy EMD is Paul Whalen, W-H-A-L-E-N. <laughs> Any others? Same page. Um, uh, attributed to me the uh, uh, one, two, three, four down. Um, instead of hopes, it should be hope. And then uh, two more down. Just uh, you have the capitalized uh, on a run rate. It should be O, small n. Other than that, I think I'm in good shape. Thank you. Any other corrections or comments? I'll make a motion to accept as amended. Second. Motion by Linda, second by Brian to accept the minutes as amended. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. I was not one, present. One abstention. Okay, we have a few public hearings this evening. First one, <clears throat> we'll board of selectmen hold a public hearing um, to consider a temporary event permit for Kingswood Regional High School, class of 2024, 20, to host the prom promenade on May 11th, 2024 in Cape Park and at the community bandstand from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., permit number 2024-24. Have somebody here from the school? Hi, um, I'm Erin Daggett and my co-advisor is Caitlin Riley. We serve as senior class advisors and today we come before you to request a permit for our annual promenade at Cape Park, which that portion should be scheduled between 5 and 545 on Saturday, May 11th. We've taken the necessary steps to ensure a smooth and safe event. We've already submitted our insurance binder and arranged for the presence of two police officers during the event. Um, this cherished tradition serves as a gathering point for our community, celebrating our high school seniors at Cape Park. They'll have the opportunity to take their photos, hear their names announced as they cross the bandstand, and enjoy the camaraderie of their peers. The promenade concludes with the students boarding the Mount Washington at 545 for their prom. We appreciate your consideration and your time. Thank you. Uh, I'll open up a public hearing. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments on this uh, hearing, public hearing? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members? 
Yeah, Linda. this is one of the highlights of the year, and I'm hoping it has as good weather as it had last year. <laughs> Somebody like to make a motion on this. Move one. to approve a temporary event permit for Kingswood Regional High School class of 2024 to host the prom promenade on May 11, 2024 in Cape Park and at the community bandstand from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Permit number 2024-24. Second. Motion by uh, Brian, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next public hearing will for Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to consider a temporary event permit for the Town of Wolfboro Economic Development Committee to host Lake Winnipesaukee Day on August 9th, 2024 at Dockside, Kate Park, and at the Community Bandstand from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Permit number 2024-25. Are you going to speak on this, Brian? Yeah, uh, I can speak on this. Um, we will need um, a signature, I assume, from the police department. Um, and I think we should, um, because they're going to be participating, probably get a signature from Parks and Rec. So those two things will uh, need to be done. I've supplied you with a, um, a better map on the back that um, shows the different things that are going to be uh, at the activity. We're looking at expanding a little bit with a pizza trailer that will be um, somewhere around where Santa's Hut usually is. Um, I think the only other thing that wasn't mentioned on the permit is we will be asking to have the two um, spotlights turned off again, the ones that are up on the poles. But um, I think we're getting pretty close and, and ready to get rolling on it. Mr. Chairman? Um, yes, Paul. Oh, um, you were going to open a public yes. hearing? Um, go ahead. Yeah, so at this point, I'll open up the public hearing for anybody that has any questions or comments on, on this event. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Board members, Paul. Mr. Chairman, since we don't have signatures, um, is, is this application premature? No, we, I, we can do it pending that they get the, uh, the other two signatures they need. And uh, the second question is uh, uh, a certificate of insurance. Um, I didn't see anything here. I didn't see it checked off. This is a town event. So it's the town's insurance that's covering. It's the EDC's. So the town is going to underwrite the insurance on this? Yeah, because okay. it's out of one of its committees. Um, at, Brian, do you is have any... Is the town going to pay for the police officers? No. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess we are. Um, we, we haven't had a police detail at it in the past. The, the police department has had members that have participated in the event, so we haven't had a detail. I guess my, my question is, uh, we, do we have a time to have the parking lot closed? I think that's one of the, the bigger issues. So like for, for, for other events like the Lyman Boat event, they've closed the parking lot for the whole day. Um, we do want to make sure that Dockside Restaurant has the availability to have a lunch at that time. So um, closing the parking lot would be um, done somewhere about 2 or 3 o'clock after their lunch time. Last year, I approached Chief Chase and asked Chief Chase if he would um, help us with an officer at that time, making sure that people didn't come into the parking lot after 2 o'clock and um, helping people who were still parked there to leave. But um, Chief Chase said he wanted to close down the lot for the entire day. He thought it was more prudent and it was safer. So I guess it's something that um, the EDC can uh, approach the new chief and ask the new chief if he's okay with closing it down after lunch or closing it down for the whole day. We had people um, at the parking lot entrance and just reminding them yep. that the lot was going to close it too, and we didn't seem to have any trouble getting yeah. them out. Um, 
I, I guess the motion needs to say that we're going to close a lot from 2 p.m. to 12 a.m., which yeah. is on here. Mm -hmm. We should probably put that in the motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Paul. How many people are going to be at this event, roughly? Spectators 3, on the front page, about 3,000. So we're going to have 3,000 people at the event and no police detail? The way it was the last two years. I'm not talking about where it was. I'm talking about what it's going to be. We're going to have 3,000 people and no police detail? I, I would, think that's unsafe. As I recall, the, the police officer who was patrolling the downtown was around yeah. that and, day. And, and we had some police officers who attended um, the event as um, just interacting with the citizens. So we had three police presence there. Captain. Captain. Hey. How you doing, Captain Mark Levy? So the first year that this was on, you had probably range, what, 600 to 800 people. Last year, it jumped to about 3,000. So I did write a signature on there, and I did basically write, you might just not get the update on it. Okay. But it was to meet and talk about it. All right, so you did sign off on this. It, I didn't sign off on it. What I signed off was to meet and talk about it. Okay. The fact of the amount of people there are in that small area. Okay. So for, for clarity, you, 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 you just want to talk about it. You didn't sign off approving it. No. Thank you. Because I'd be looking at a police detail with that many people down there. Okay. So do you think we should have a police yes. detail? Yes. Okay. How many? Two. Yeah, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, with that many people, that many crowd, if you Jump the first time from six to eight hundred to three thousand. This time, who knows what you're going to get your next time? Okay. And do you want it uh, from the five to twelve a.m.? Is that the sh time you want the the detail to be there? It all depends when you close down the dock side and when everything is starting. That's what I would look at. So it, it, the event starts officially starts at five and closes at ten. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the time. So for I'd me. look at. If you're looking at a half hour before, a half hour after. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's how I would do it. And you'll have volunteers there at the 2 o'clock range to help with the yep. informing exactly. people of the parking lot and stuff. Because so. yep. we can never guarantee our officers are going to be able to be stay down there. Okay. The right. ones that aren't shift. Yep. Depending Understandable. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I think it would be prudent to have two officers on a detail down there with this yeah. large of a crowd on a... Right. On a Friday night. I mean, we have it for the school, so. Yep. For their prom. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? Would you like a motion? Certainly. Let's see if I can get this together. <clears throat> I move to issue a temporary event permit for the town of Wolfers Economic Development Committee to host. Lake Winnipesaukee Day on August 9th, 2024 at the Dockside Kate Park and at the Community Bandstand from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. with the spotlights being turned off, uh, that the parking lot is closed from 2 p.m. to 12 a.m. and that the event has two detailed officers. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Dave. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, the next public hearing. Wolfer Board of Selectmen hold a public hearing to consider a temporary event permit for the First Congregational Church to host a blessing of boats on June 1st, 2024 at the Town Docks from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Permit number 2024-26. We have somebody here from the church for this? Don't see anybody, nobody online. This is a recurring event, I believe. This is a, this is just a very quick little. Event. Yes. 
board wish no, to go through with this at this time or? Lindsay, I, my guess is that we should <clears throat> table it and see if we can get somebody here. To explain a little bit about it? Yeah, I yeah. don't recall this, <clears throat> the blessing of the boats before. Somebody would like to make a motion to that effect to table this to our next yeah, meeting? Move to table it. I'll second. To our, it be the April 17th meeting. April 17th meeting to see if we can get somebody here. Any, so we have a motion and a second to table to next, next Wednesday. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Let's see. Next public hearing, the Town of Wolfboro hold a public hearing. Uh, let's see, in accordance with IRS, uh, I'm sorry, Town of Wolfboro hold a public hearing for the acceptance of unanticipated funds of an amount greater than $10,000 in accordance with RSA 3195B3A to authorize the Town of Wolfboro to apply for the Emergency Management Performance Grant for a generator for the public safety building and the upfit of the emergency operations center and if awarded to accept the funds up to $102,156. Mr. Chairman, just a housekeeping issue on this. Uh, this was scheduled for April 3rd. However, because the uh, April 3rd meeting was postponed due to the storm event, uh, this public hearing was sent to another date set certain. Uh, the meeting was never open. Therefore, we are compliant with the uh, regulations for the public hearing. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any other information for this or just open up? Chief, like to speak to it? What's up, Chief? Hi, Tom Zotti, Fire Chief. Um, as we've discussed, this is the grant for um, part of the cost of the upfit of the new EOC and the new public safety building and the generator and associated equipment that goes with that. Um, not to get too far out into the acronym universe, but it's an emergency management performance grant. It's a 50-50 grant. The 50% that the town would be responsible for is the money we've raised towards the construction of the building. So this would literally help offset some of the cost to the town. Um, I believe in your backup materials, you have um, a copy of the recommended language uh, for adoption mm -hmm. that we'll have to send to the state. And I have a clean copy of the uh, eight pages they were asking you to sign off should you choose to accept this <laughs> money. And I'd be happy to answer any questions I could. Okay, uh, Linda, go ahead. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that the $102,516 was included in the bond for this project? This is Yes, not, this, okay. uh, this if, should we um, receive final approval? would actually be used to reduce the cost to the taxpayers of the project by $102,000 and change. Thank you, that's what I wanted them to hear. Mm -hmm. Paul, do you have a question? No, I had the same question. I just wanted to know if it was in the budget um, yeah. and did it, um, did it survive uh, the default? And you've answered both questions. Thank yeah, in the at Warren article that was approved, the. I believe it was 13.2 million number was the maximum so the and any, any grants received would be to offset mm -hmm. uh, okay. that cost for that amount of money towards uh, what it's costing the taxpayers. Yep, thank you. Thanks for explaining it three times. <laughs> okay, this time I'm gonna open up the public hearing. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments for us or the chief? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Board members? Do you want to, would you like a motion? Yes. I move to accept the terms of the emergency management performance grant as presented in the amount of $102,156 for the 
operate, uh, emergency operation center generator and uh, equipment project. Further, the board, ex uh, the board acknowledges that the total cost of this project will be $204,312, in which the town will, rep will, re will be responsible for 50% match, or $102,516, and to authorize the town manager, James Pinio, to sign all documents related to this grant. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the bulk vote. We have uh, two weekly manifests, uh, one for March 22nd for $425,000, one for March 29th, which is $1,412,000. We have uh, four property tax exemption credits. Uh, we have two abatements, uh, one, two, three, four, five intent to cut uh, permits, two, three, and three uh, yield tax levy warrants on that. So, and I just, you know, just let people know because we were asked at the last meeting, these weekly manifests, it sounds like we just approve a lump sum here, but the board, every board member of the selectmen get a detailed uh, breakout of what the manifests are. So every check is made out there that we're able to review and look at and stuff. So um, we do get to review that beforehand. So that being said, I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve the bulk vote. Second. We have a motion, a second to approve the bulk vote, items A through E. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Times I don't. Okay, next we have some committees Thank to you. fill here. We'll start out with the with the Ag Commission, Agricultural Commission. We have we have four people uh, to appoint here tonight that have expressed interest. Uh, Wendy Rogers for a term that's going to expire in 2027. Katie P uh, Petternell uh, for a term that expires on 2026. Laureen Strout, Strout for a term expiring on 2027. And Justin Brown is an alternate for a term expiring in, on, in March of 2027. Do we have any of these that want to speak or say anything to us here this evening? Don't have to. It's, that's fine. Just uh, give you the opportunity. Board members, would like to. Somebody want to make a motion on on these? This group. I'll make a motion that we um, prove to the Ag Commission: Wendy Rogers, Kathy Petternell, Lorraine Strout, Justin Brown as an alternate to expire in 2027. And one was 2026. 20, yep. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Dave, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to thank, thank those uh, four people for volunteering. The next committee we have is a cable franchise committee. We have four folks on this one, too. We have David Wells for term expiring in 2025. Denise Valesco uh, for March of 2025. Mm -hmm. Catherine Dragonfly for a term expiring in March of 2025. And Howard Lowe, also a term expiring in 2025. Are any of those folks here wish to come up and say anything? Board members? Somebody like to make a motion on this group? Move to appoint David Wells, Denise Velasco, Catherine Dragonfly, and Howard Lowe for the Cable Franchise Committee. Terms expire on March 2027. I'll second. Motion made by Brian, seconded by Linda. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for this group of people, too. Conservation Commission. We have four folks on this one. Uh, Lenore Clark for term expiring in 2027, 
Bob Gilbert, term expiring on 20, 20, March of 27. Brenda Jort for a term expiring March of 27. And Jeff Marchand for a term expiring on March of 27. Any of those folks like to come up? Lenore. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Lenore Clark. I have been on the Conservation Commission since about 2005, I think, and uh, serving as in the chairmanship position since about 2019. Um, Jeff and Bob were unable to make it tonight, but they are longtime members and very valued, and you know Brenda since she takes your minutes. Um, and I just wanted to make uh, one point of order. Bob Gilbert is actually an alternate, not a full member. I spoke to Amy about that last week. Thank you. I recall Linda saying at a previous selectman's meeting that you were all hoping to put a face to the name, and I know most folks here know me, but for the folks on TV, hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Any questions for Lenore while she's there? Okay. Board members. I'll make a motion uh, to appoint Lorraine Clark, uh, Brenda Jurett, and Jeff Marchand as regular members, and Bob Gilbert as an alternative, all terms ending in 2027. Second. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next is the Economic Development Committee. We have uh, Lucy Van Cleve for a term expiring in 2020, March of 27. Cindy Fournier for a term expiring in March of 27. Uh, Kathy Fairman for a term expiring in March of 27. Catherine Dragonfly for a term expiring in March of 27. Uh, Justin Brown for a term expiring in 2026. Uh, and Mary DeVries as an alternate for a term expiring in 2027. There is a note here too, and I apologize I didn't see it for the Cable Franchise Committee group, but Lucy, Cindy, Kathy, and Mary are returning members. Jeremy from Huggins and Liz from Brewster confirm they are not renewing membership. This open spot for two new folks who applied which would be uh, Catherine and Justin, I believe. Correct. So. so move to appoint Lucy Van Cleve, Cindy Fournier, Kathy Fairman, Catherine Dragonfly, and Justin Brown as Economic Development Committee members. Um, terms expired in 2027, except Justin Brown's, who's expires in 2026 and to appoint Mary DeVries as an alternate, her term to expire on 2027. Second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Dave. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everybody. Next committee is the Energy Committee. We have uh, Rick Hurrian for term expiring in March of 27. Warren Wilson for term expiring in March of 27, Eli Roxby for a term expiring in March of 27, and Jonathan Hewitt as an alternate with a term expiring in March of 26. Any of those folks here want to come up or anything? N Nancy sent me um, an email apologizing that she couldn't make it. Um, she said to speak on behalf of the Energy Committee and that she is extremely happy with the group that we have and wanted me to move to appoint Rick Curian, Warren Wilson, Eli Roxbury, and Jonathan Hewitt as an alternative, all terms expiring 2027. Second. Yeah. I think Jonathan Hewitt's is, was expiring in 26. Yes, 26. Then, yeah. It was redone there. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? We have a motion by Brian, seconded by Dave. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next up is the Heritage Commission. We have uh, Maggie Steer for term that expires in 25. Catherine Dragonfly, term expires in 26. Mark Lush for term that expires in 27. Dave Bolduck, term expires in 27, and Ginger Hankins for term that expires in 27. Any of those folks here wish to come up? 
Sure. I'm Ginger Hankins. My husband and I were lucky enough to move yeah. to wonderful Wolfboro a year and a half ago. One of the things we really appreciate is the sense of history. So I look forward to working on the Heritage Commission and hopefully help preserve some of that history. Thank you. Maggie. Thank you. Good evening. I just wanted to say the Heritage Commission has um, still, still has openings on the commission, and we are looking for another member and alternates. I am going to be staying on as chair for a little while longer. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Okay, anybody else? Board members. So move to appoint Maggie Steer. Her term expires March 2025. Um, Catherine Dragonfly, her term expires 2025. Mark Lush, term expires 2027. David Bolduck, term expires 2027. And Ginger Hankins, term expires 2027, I think. Because I have two different sets of numbers here. I think it's 26 for Catherine Dragon. Yeah. It. Yeah. We have it as 26 yep. because we tried to stagger them. Yeah. Yep. That's all. Because we had all the same year, they yep. all get out. We don't. So I think you're 26, which yep. means you have to renew then. I, I would just like to clarify, although Mark Lush is not here, he specifically responded that he would like to stay an alternate, and I believe that Amy bumped him up to a full member without um, talking to him. Okay. So I think I would recommend that we keep him as an alternate. Okay. okay. So I will amend my appointment with Mark Lush being an alternate whose term expires 2027, and um, Catherine Dragonfly's term expires in 2026. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, and then the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Um, we have Tavis Austin for a term to expire April 20th in 2028. Tavis isn't here with us this evening. Um, these aren't public hearings. This is, what's this oh, to do point with? Point of order. I mean, I think that the citizens have a right to voice their opinion over someone who will be sitting on a commission for four years, who actually isn't a citizen of Wolfboro. Is that a discussion that that the citizens are allowed to bring up to talk about that this is an employee? I know the employees because when I was working in Ossipi, I was a appointed as a member to the uh, Lakes Region Planning Commission for the town of Ossipi there, or during my employment there, representing the town that I was employed with. So, so this I, is a four-year appointment for an employee who has already has stated on the record and been on the record saying that they were putting in applications for other towns. So well, is this has, an appointment that our town should be making for an employee? That has for nothing to do with commission? what we're talking about here, Bobby. If whatever could or possibly happen, in the future, doesn't have any bearing. He's employed here right now, is being appointed for the uh, this position in the Lake Region Planning Commission. If his, if the employment status changes, then we would be looking at somebody else to, f to reappoint to fill we have the some spot really in. Great people in this town who this position was sort of a few board select board meetings ago was thrust upon this person while I listened to you nominate him. Mm -hmm. This wasn't a person who came forward for this position. So I just feel like maybe this is a position that should be opened up to the town citizens to see if a citizen who lives here can fill this okay. position. Linda. Yeah, um, my husband has been on, a, on the Lakes Region Planning Commission for probably 10 or 15 years representing the town. And generally, the uh, Director of Planning and Development has been the other person. Matt Sullivan was, um, Rob Houseman. So that is what we've done for a number of years. Well, Rob was a citizen here, so yeah. that's a different story. I, right I'm there. just saying but, that okay. that's, that's what we did. I'm just responding to our, our I just wanted policy. to ask because it's yeah. a four-year appointment to okay. the commission for our town. Thank Thanks. you. Board members, any 
Any comments, discussion, or motion? Let's not all jump at this at once. <laughs> I'll move that we uh, appoint Tavis Austin to the Lake Trade and Planning Commission. I'll second that for to get on the floor here. Any other any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I'll abstain. And one abstention. Thank you. Uh, next one, trustee of the trust funds. Blaine Kaiser is an alternate for term expiring in March of 27. Blaine here, no. No Blaine. Okay, it's, uh, yeah, especially Blaine came off as a member and Rick Hawes took his spot. So Blaine is gonna be, come an alternate here. Um, so that would say a recommendation from the, uh, it was handed to us here. Anybody care to make a motion? I'll move to um, make Blaine Kaiser an alternate to the trustees of trust funds. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Wolfboro Waters Committee. We have three folks here. Dana Huff for a term expiring in March of 27, Stephen Town for a term expiring in March of 27, and Mary DeVries is an alternate term expiring in March of 27. Mary is returning, she likes the alternate spots, and Dana and Stephen are new uh, to the board. Linda. Yeah, um, Dana Huff is on our assessing subcommittee and was interested in moving up to Wolfboro Waters. He has just um, retired as an engineer from Ty and Bomb, which will be a great access, access asset to the committee. This will make the committee of 11, but we can use that number. We have three subcommittees and a number of working groups. Um, so. Steve Town, we'd love to have him to see what he brings, and Mary's been with us a long time. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? And we'd like to make a motion. Yeah, I'll move that we appoint Dana Huff, Stephen Town, and Mary DeRees to the Wolfboro Waters Committees, their term ending in 2027. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That takes care of our committees. New business. Approval for a barge permit for Wolfboro Dock Company. No. We have a, a permit here. Permit application, rather. Certificate of insurance. Some of these policies will have to be updated as some of the pieces of them expire partway through the year. Yeah which a lot of businesses do that, and we just notify them they need to keep the, get us an updated policy when it comes in. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Paul. Yeah, I, I didn't hear all of you, but I, as I looked at this, and maybe I have dated information, but we have uh, a liability on auto, which is expired. Do we have an updated insurance document? Not yet. Not yet? That would be issued, uh, before the permit is issued, that would be um, by Amy, that would absolutely be updated. As you can see, this was a 12 6 2023 yep. uh, rider. So you've got a couple of uh, couple here. So this certificate of liability insurance will be updated before anything takes place? That mm -hmm. would be correct. We should just make that part of the motion. Yeah, okay. Just, just. Any other questions, comments from the board? I'd entertain a motion on, on this uh, application. I'll move to approve the barge, per, barge permit for the Wolfboro Dock Committee subject to the receipt in proper order of an updated certificate of liability insurance. I'll second that. Motion by Paul, seconded by Linda to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, next up is the a commercial. 
uh, vessel landing permit or the Winnie Adventurer. Same issue. We have anybody here? I believe from... he's online, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes, good evening. Thank you. How are you tonight? Oh, there he is. Oh, jeez. Brad, so, I have a question. Yes. Uh, how many boats uh, are, does he have at the town docks? There, there would be one. And how do you estimate your 100 um, landings? Well, last year I fell short of my estimate. Um, the weather was not um, conducive to uh, many tours along uh, over the weekends, as many people might recall. Um, but this year, um, I'm anticipating better weather patterns and uh, more activity um, on shorter uh, trips in and out of uh, Wolfboro. So I might have missed it. How many landings did you have last year? Oh my goodness. Um, uh, probably 30 maximum. Okay. okay. It was that 30, if I understand the application, um, a round trip is two landings. So that meant you came Correct. in. So it was only 15, 15 um, in, in and out. So you only came in 15 times? Okay. okay. Yes. Any other questions? I have, I have one more comment. He gave us, a, and thank you for the picture of your sign. And my understanding is this sign uh, needs to be on the lower level because the upper level is the Correct. Molly B and the Winnipesaukee, I mean the Mount Washington, Washington. and yours is on the uh, wrong below. Chairman? <laughs> yes. Um, Amy is um, tremendous support and has communicated um, you know, sign location, et cetera, for me. Well, the other question I got too is looking at the insurance uh, certificate. Yeah, I found there are it. no dates for the expiration dates listed. Yep. Um, well, down, I guess down at the bottom, there is, yeah, commercial watercraft and excess liability. Uh, but the liability expires in April of 24. Um, that, that's been renewed, and I sent um, I, uh, the insurance agent um, sent uh, sent the town through um, Amy uh, Amy's email the updated uh, policy okay. for the additional million dollars. So there's a full two million dollars liability in place. Okay. So we could make that part of the motion just to make sure because we don't see it here with us tonight, but. Um, know that we know it's coming or it's already there. So, board members? I'll make a motion to grant a commercial vehicle landing permit to Winnie Adventures. Second. Contention upon getting that updated or seeing that updated insurance. He said he sent it. So. Right. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Next on our agenda is the uh, 2024 Marine Patrol vessel uh, parking down at our town docks. Good evening, ma'am, gentlemen. Um, I'm Captain Brendan Davey, New Hampshire State Police Headquarters Operations. And uh, last summer, I was a field area captain to whom Marine Patrol reported. This year, I will not be, but I'm the nearest guy we've got in this uniform tonight. So I'm here to ask again if we might be able to uh, use the dock space uh, that belongs to the town to, to dock an AMBAR uh, vessel for response for emergency. Uh, purposes to any of the islands for Wolfboro Police Department or other agencies as may be necessary. 
and also as a normal launch station for uh, our Marine Patrol mm -hmm. officers. I would submit that last year was a great opportunity to talk to a lot of people about water safety, and uh, I think it was a, a raving success, all told, from my perspective, but I'm open to questions, of course. That was one of my questions, is your opinion on how you felt it worked out for you guys last year, so it was positive uh, response and... Yes, sir. Yep. Good. Yes, sir. No, uh, no problems, no incidents, no tomfoolery with the, with the vessel or the dock or anything of that nature. And uh, it, it really was a, a, a great opportunity to talk to a lot of people about water safety yep. and to be a, a presence right here in the busiest, what I think is the busiest bay on the lake. Mm -hmm. um, so I do recall that there was some discussion about the potential of adjusting the position with the, uh, what was expected to be a new municipal electric department boat maybe this year. And of course, your doc, your call. Uh, I would submit that our, uh, our own staff over there have signs at the ready. I know we talked about signage last year. Um, high contrast, I think uh, reflective signs as well, uh, just to clarify that it would be mm -hmm. for Marine Patrol vessel. So we'll put that where you would want it. And uh, if the Marine Patrol vessel were to be the one out at the end of the dock. Uh, the staff over there have asked me for consideration uh, for some type of bumper um, to protect the boat and the dock, one from the other. Mm -hmm. Certainly open to any questions you have. Yep. Board members, any questions? I uh, this is a uh, newbie here, sorry. This is a yes, designated sir. spot? Yes. And a line. Okay, thank you. Linda. I, I have, I'm willing to give you the spot. Can you bring your own bumper? We're in a default budget. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank bring you. your yeah, own I, bumper. You My, bring your own bumpers, and I'm fine. Yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll duct tape a bunch of Nerf balls out there. That's what yeah. We're taking Perfect. bumper donations. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for the captain? Okay. If you guys are all right, what I would do um, is work with Captain Davey or whoever he liaisons and staff once the new municipal electric boat arrives to strategize where the best placement for the vessels are that mm -hmm. makes sense for all this, the three major governmental users. Yep, I think it makes sense. Linda. Yes, I also heard that the mail boat is being redone and it's gonna be a little larger, so you may wanna count that in as we look for space at the town docks. Do we have an idea how much larger? Um, he was talking to Amy the other day. I just happened okay. to be there, and I'm, my understanding, it's owned by Dive Winnipesaukee, isn't it? Yes. I think I would try oh, Tom. I'll find out. <clears throat> Any other questions? Motion? Move to allow the Marine Patrol vessel to be parked at the Wolfboro Town Docks for the 2024 season. I'll second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Linda. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There you go. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. All right, next on our agenda, discussion regarding an amendment to the Town of Wolfboro alcohol on town properties. Okay, so in your packet, um, you have a memo from me, um, which is run through staff regarding updating the uh, ordinance to authorize uh, consumption of alcoholic beverages at the Pop Whale and Ice and Art Center. Uh, you can see uh, within the draft documents that there are some changes to it. Um, those are all in track changes form so that you could make recommendations uh, moving forward. Uh, this is one of the items that Chuck Smith, the director of operations out there, wanted to uh, start moving across the board so that we could uh, schedule some events in that facility that uh, might attract uh, different types of events. Uh, with that said, uh, there was some question initially on about separating um, youth activities from this. That's been captured in here. Mm -hmm. And we've also um, noted in here the RSA relative to um, the issuance of offsite uh, catering services, which would include uh, licensing of alcoholic beverages within the facility. 
Uh, we did as well update the uh, application for your review. Um, would like to get input from the board as to if they want any adjustments before we schedule a public hearing. You also do have in here uh, an outline from Primex. We fall within their insurance mm -hmm. requirements. Um, and we have a, a best practice toward the end uh, from Primex uh, regarding risk management for such events at the location. Uh, Chuck is here to speak on behalf of this if needed, and I can try to answer any questions that you may have. Linda. Yeah, uh, we have had alcohol able to be uh, used at the town hall in different, different places around town. Have we experienced any problems? No. To my knowledge, we have not. Okay, good. Um, at Abernathy, beer and wine is allowed outside on the patio and on the, the picnic area. Um, well, I... It says, uh, Abernathy Lodge, the, um, and during the months of June through August, only its outside patio and adjoining areas in accordance with the town Abernathy use policy. So um, just wanted to make sure that the Pop Whale and Ice and Art Center, its alcohol use will only be inside the building. Is that correct? Um, that is what is intended. That is correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that in case we need to clarify it, because one building does it one way, we don't want the other building, everybody to just assume that alcohol would be able to be outside that building too. Well, that may mean we need an alcohol use policy for that. We do for the, uh, the town hall. We do for Abenaki. Correct. We have a policy for the Libby Museum, um, and I think uh, we probably should get one for the Clark House, and we should get one for the Pop Whelan, so we ha know exactly what the criteria is. Yep. So I think those two need it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. As can be based on different facilities, yes. Any other questions or comments for the town yeah, just, manager? Uh, to if I could? Yep. Yes, Paul. So I read through the, uh, through the document and the track changes. I did not see, and it's probably because I just oversighted it, is there a, um, is there a triggering mechanism uh, that says if, there, if the population who is going to attend an event hits a certain level, it, it triggers the requirement for a police detail? We do not have that formulated in this at this time. Um, I think that is something that can be alluded to in the um, use policy within the facility, and I think it boils down to the discretion of the Board of Selectmen when they come in for a permit. Uh, I, I... Well, maybe what we need to know is the capacity of each of the facilities. Mm -hmm. That, I think, governs, you know, this room is 300. That's its capacity. I, right. We should have a capacity of the of the um, Pop Whalen and see what the police department feels yeah, with I, that number. I don't know what the right what the right answer is, but uh, maybe because uh, I see that Chuck uh, uh, or Jim, you you uh, copied uh, the chief, the two chiefs. Maybe they just need to uh, weigh in at some point, give you some thoughts on on how this ought to operate. Same thing for fire. I mean, if you have a a lot of people in a facility, you still have a fire code, right? You can't exceed how many people can be in the building. But for alcohol, maybe, uh, maybe some consideration of a, of a volume will trigger the need for a police detail. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so we'll get that. So we will for... work on those uh, action items you've identified and we'll schedule a public hearing. Thanks. Um, probably at this point it would be for the May first okay. meeting in May. Yep. All right, that's okay. what I was thinking. It would be in May. That sounds good. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Let's see. Where are we now? What are selectmen the rules of procedure, handbook update, and committee assignments? Let's tackle the uh, rules of procedure first. I. Uh, 
have any? So, uh, you Chairman, go, first. go ahead. Um, so I'm not following along, get a newbie. Um, on the front page here, it says uh, Wolfboro Board of Selectmen Member Handbook. Is this what was published last year as well? This has been modified by legal. Did it have phone numbers on it last year as well? No, I don't believe okay. so. Thank you. <coughs> okay. um, Are you in the, uh, the rules of procedure? No, I, I said I'm not following along very well. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I'm posed up here. I apologize. <laughs> Linda. Yeah, if I looked at the track um, copy, mm -hmm. it looked to me as if we're okay for uh, section one. We're, when we get under section two, we have A, you have B, officers, and it looks to me that chairman should go out and be one chairperson, and then election and duty should be A and B, mm -hmm. and then we come over to the next, we do two, vice chair, and then elections A and B. I think it um, mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. will flow better. Yep. There was one other I meant to yep. up here. Yep. <sighs> Anything else here yet? I, I have a, I'm, I've got a lot today. Okay. Um, the, the underneath, under committees, and I was wondering whether the board shouldn't put a list of the committees that we have. And we have some standing committees um, like, um, let's see if I can find my, like the Agricultural Committee, the Budget Committee, um, the CIP Committee, the Conservation Committee, the Economic Development Committee, the Emergency Management Committee, Manage Emergency Operations Committee, Energy, Heritage, Hazard Mitigation, I think is just when we have to update the plan, so that may be, yep. that isn't one. Library liaison, milfoil, yep. negotiation is one on the, the uh, years we have it, planning board, police commission liaison, and Wolfboro Waters. Those seem to be our standing committees, and I wonder whether we shouldn't put a list of them in under committees. So you do committee is... I would agree. Uh, C and then one, you can put a list of that, and then we can put two, um, the um, the board of select uh, the board of selectmen sends a representative to the chamber, community TV, Wolfboro Historical Society, the Friends of Abenaki, the Friends of the Libby, and the Friends of Pop, mm -hmm. and that would be two. That's where we send our representatives to, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't put any of the ad hoc because they come and go. So I'd like to add that if everybody's in agreement. Mm -hmm. You talk about adding that into our rules of procedure? Yep, under committees, and then I would list them. So that if somebody picked up our, our um, okay. rules of procedure, they would know the standing committees that the Board of Selectmen send mm -hmm. members to and would also know what organizations we send representatives to. Okay. So they go under C, under committees. Yeah, and I'll get this to... Amy. Huh? Yep. Okay. What else we got? Can we talk about the municipal committee chair guide, or is that too early? No, I haven't gotten to that. I'm, oh, I've okay. got some over uh, there, uh, too. Uh, <laughs> this is just uh, for the rules, I uh, thought, right? Uh, That's all you want, That's, our rules. We're doing just the rules of procedure yep. right now, right? Yep. One I did have on, go oh, under section four, rules of order, under B, the agenda. Um, we have our list of 14 order of how we put things on together on our agenda. I recall a few years ago, we had removed the public input session that was listed at number three to keep it at the end. Mm. Um, and that never got changed in here. But I believe right now the way it stands with our board vote for back then still holds true. So do we want to update the print version of this to keep that in? No, to take it, take out the number three. That's what I mean, take it out. Yeah, yeah. take out number three. I'm not and following. Leave. So yeah. you want public input at the beginning of the meeting? No, no at the end. No, it would be just at, at number but 12. But not at the beginning. Not at the beginning. Just at number 12. Just at the end. So we'd remove... 
Number three there. I think that's out in the new copy she wrote. There is no public hearing. Yeah, mine, mine has public hearings as number three, not yeah. public input. But that would be public hearings for the generator. Like we accepted. just went through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is four. But you, it already has been out on the on this copy. The hard one. Question, the oh, okay. she Question right. for uh, the chair. Yes. So. Um, the public input piece, um, if I remember from watching television, was at the beginning and at the end, right? We moved it out of the beginning. And we, and we did that for what reason? We found that there was, um, at times, hard to uh, stop the public input. We had some disruptive, um, that made it hard for the meeting to continue. So the countervening argument is somebody has to wait for all of us to do all of our okay. business and then it's come to the microphone and speak their mind. Correct. And we can't, we can't have a little a buzzer that <laughs> says three minutes and... Well, sometimes the buzzer, even though work. go, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not going to be uh, supportive of taking it out. I just, well, it's already out. It's been yeah, voted out. So. I, I'd like to keep it. I'd like to follow the practice of having public input at the beginning of the meeting. Well, you'd have to have that. Have to be another motion and a. a I'll board, make a motion to that approval. As well as at the end of the meeting, I'd like to move that we have public input sessions uh, limited to three minutes. I think is what it is, Linda. Yes, it is three minutes per person. Per 15 person. Minutes. Um, 15 minutes max as item number three, replace, you know, 2A or 2B, um, and then at the end of the meeting as well. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm off to a good start. <laughs> you are. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. <laughs> we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Anything else, board board members? Everything else. Okay. My my understanding that all these track changes were put into the the uh, new version that we got yeah. in our packet. How right. I saw it. Anything else on this one, on the rules of procedure? So if not, we'll move on to the uh, handbook. Mm -hmm. In the handbook under the list of what we are going to include in it, let me find that page. Mm -hmm. It's way back here. Um, I would like to add, when I looked at the package, 41 colon 8 is not there. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to also add 41 colon B, which is our financial duties. That's that mm -hmm. part of it. Yep. And then I would also like to add um, of the Knowing Your Territory 2022 pages 18 through 42, which specifically addresses each area um, that the Board of Selectmen has uh, authority over and also gives you the RSA. And so it would help somebody who was new if you weren't understanding um, what we needed to follow for laying out a highway. It gives you the statute and the section and you could go mm -hmm. to that and find it out. And I, have, I use the Knowing Your Territory book all the time. So those are the ones that I would like to add to the handbook. Sounds good. Anything else? I, um, uh, I'd like to add a, a functional organization chart to the handbook, please. Jim has been kind enough to produce one. Just want to add it to the, uh, to the handbook. I think that sounds good. 
Okay. Anything else, board? Uh, just as a point of clarification, I mean, you, you have identified a couple other items under RSA 41. Um, do you want to just include the full chapter of 41? I started making a copies of them. They were, it, it was huge, it, you'll, and then you'll, I went you'll be to killing this, trees. which was shorter. You'll be killing trees. I mean, I can go e either way. will do it for me. Do it um, by reference. I just, this one gave also a little explanation. But I think the responsibilities of the Board of Selectmen should be in this packet, whatever way. I can do it by the statutes, or I can do it from that section of the Knowing Your Territory. Yeah, I mean, it is a full 28 pages, but... You can do it by it, reference. It is an easy... Yeah, just reference that grab. statute if you want okay. to. Okay, I'll reference it. Yep. Yeah, just that do it by good. reference. Put a link in it. If somebody's looking at this online, just have a hot link to it, and they can just pop it up. Okay, anything else under the, uh, for the handbook? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to jump into the committee assignments. Um, are we st still on the committee chair guide, or is that, or do I have an earlier version? That's the one that's in there. I'd like to make a motion that uh, the municipal committee chair guide and the code of ethics for board committee and commission members be provided to all uh, committees elected uh, and appointed as I'll a recommendation that. from the board of selectmen to adopt them. Can't require it, but a recommendation to adopt them. I'll okay. second. Thank Motion you. by Paul, seconded by Linda. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, you got on the board with one. <laughs> Anything else? All right, committee assignments. We'll go down through these. Okay. Start off with the Ag, the Ag Commission. Currently, it's Dave. You want to hold the same or make a change? I know me. Dave's good? Okay. The budget committee. That's me. And yeah. I'll, I'll keep the alternate. So Brian stays as a member and Linda is the alternate for that? Okay. Cable TV advisory committee was Luke. Is that something that uh, Paul would like to... I knew okay. they were going to do that. Sure. You'd be agreeable to that? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the alternate? I do, I, I just, yeah, who's the alternate on that? Brian's, Brian was listed as the alternate. Just stay on the alternate, Brian? Yep. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, I'd like to take the chamber. So you'd be the full yep. regular member? Okay. And then we have an alternate opening. If nobody wants it, I would, would be interested in doing okay. that. If nobody else wants you know, we're going to jump on it. No okay. alternate. Will Linda be the full? I'll be the alternate. Uh, CIP committee. I'd like Lin to keep that. Linda going to stay on that. And I'll be the alternate. And Brian be the alternate on that. Okay. Charette Committee. The what? That's one that, what? you know, it's doesn't all, um, meet that often. So I'll stay on, but if somebody else wants it, I'm more than willing to give it up. Sounds like you're staying on, Linda. I guess it does. <laughs> <laughs> Conservation Commission liaison. Dave, that's been you. Fine with me. You want to stay on that? The EDC. That's me. That's Brian. Hmm. Good with that, Brian? Yep. And, and the alternate for... Yeah, I'd Linda? like to because I do last night Wolfboro as that alternate. Yep. And you're going to always stay on with the yep. last night of Wolfboro? Yeah. That. Emergency Management Committee. That's been Dave. Oh, oh. Something you want to keep on, Dave? I'll be his alternate. Is that okay? 
And Paul, mm -hmm. is that you? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Emergency Operations Planning Committee. That's EOP. Been, that's been yeah, Linda and Luke. I'll be on it. Paul? Yep. Okay. So Paul will take Luke's spot. Mm -hmm. Linda, you going to stay on that? Um, or do you want to? Yeah, I, I think maybe I'll go off that and we'll let just um, Paul do it. Okay, any volunteers for that one? It's the second Wednesdays. I'll take I'll take that one then. Okay. I'll go on. Good. You, Brad? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Energy <laughs> Committee. That's me. That's Brian. Friends of Abenaki. It's been Dave. What? Friends of Abenaki? Yep. Friends of Libby Museum. Now, last year, Luke and I had swapped. Uh, he came over to the uh, Friends of Libby, and I went over to the Wolf Pearl Waters as the alternate. So that's been Luke there. Does anybody Paul? want to step in on the are museum? You, are you going to stay on that? No, so I've, I got off knowledge? it. Knowledge? No, we're... Uh, <laughs> no, I got I'll, off I'll, it. Yeah, fine. That's fine. You'll do so, it, Paul? Yep, that's fine. Hazard mitigation has been me. Um, haven't had anything to do with that yet, but if the time comes, I'd be happy to keep keep on doing that. Heritage Commission. That's me. Brian, going to take that one. Okay, library liaison. Linda. I'll, I'll keep that. Yep. Keep that. <clears throat> Wolf Oil Millfoil Committee. I'll, Linda? I'll stay on that forever. I'm the, am I the alternate on the millfoil? Yes, you're the alternate on that, I'll Brian. Stay, I'll stay, stay on that. that. I'll stay on that. Negotiations committee. Had Dave in there for yeah. that. And we talked about, do you, you want to uh, stay on with that yeah. stuff? Uh, and I would like to have a second. Like a second one on that, too? Paul, would you be interested in that? Be the business I'll be glad background to step in. And stuff? Uh, okay. you're, you're sticking around? Yep, Dave will stay on it too, so that'll be a the, two member. Paul, okay. All right, thank you. Dave and Paul. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Planning board, I'm more than happy to stay on that. Brad, could I be your second if you don't have one? Yeah, because yep. the alternate's been Linda. And I, oh, I gotta, gotta, No, I stepped down since my husband was elected. Yeah, can so I, so I was uh, just going to say, that? so mm -hmm. it's open, so yeah. we'll do. Like Good. to be the alternate, Paul? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Police Commission liaison. That was Luke. That was Luke. <laughs> I'll do it. I Paul? covered for Luke while he was out. Oh, so you want I, to do it? So I don't mind doing the police Luke, commission. Will be the alternate? I, I don't mind being the, the member. Okay. Well, do you want to be member or alternate, Paul? I'll be the member. I'll be fine. Okay, and Brian, you would be the alternate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, no. All right. Okay. Public Safety Building Committee ad hoc. Is that something we even need anymore? Because of I mean, it's, this point, I don't believe we do. Yep, I agree. So It's done? I, it's I, finally done. I would hope the committee's done. We've got a building half built over there, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's finally done. So we'll eliminate that one. Last night. <clears throat> it's already taken care of up above. It's on there twice. Okay, that's right. Sidewalk ad hoc committee. That's me. And that's me. Brian and I yep. are doing that. Lyndon Bryan. Okay. Short-term rental committee. I don't think that's up and running anymore out of the planning board. I don't believe it is either, so. Is it? Is, if they. Is that a planning board function or? A, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a committee and they we, put we together. Just, just, that would be a. Taken up at the planning board, right? Okay. Do you want it, Paul? It's a planning board function. It's not an active committee right now, so. I think it's here because we send a representative to it. Yeah. yeah. Would you so be? It would be board. one of you two. Yeah. Yeah. If it comes back on to do some work on that, you know, for this coming <laughs> year for any um, warrant outings or anything, it'd probably get a go. And again, we could put a member on there. Uh, town doc. Ad hoc committee. That, that one is um, on hold now, but once we look at phase 
is it four or five? I think four. Yeah, I think it is four. It's the parking lot, and we have the seawall. So yeah. I, I, I'm more than willing to stay on that yeah. committee. I was on it with you, right? Yes. You were. Yeah. Yes, they was were. I the alternate, or was I? There were two. There were two, two members. And before you came on, Paul was on it with me. Yeah. Right. It's a full it's member. It's, yeah. It's a full membership. Yeah. You want it? Yeah. So we'll Linda stay on, Brian. Yeah, Linda and I. Okay. For community TV, uh, Brad. Yep, I've been on it. I'd be happy to stay on that. I'll be glad to help you on that. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. We'll take you up on that. Wolfboro Historical Society. That's, that's Ben Luke. I don't know. Do they? Wolfboro, don't have a time frame for when they meet there. Do they still meet and stuff or? I think they do. Why not? I'll take it and uh, and try to make connections. We should. We're just doing a lease with them. We probably should have yep. okay. somebody there. Mm -hmm. Wolfboro Waters. I will definitely Linda. do Wolfboro Waters, yes. Is that yep. you two guys? You two, right? Well, two of us have been doing it. Yep. yep. Sure. And I've been the alternate on yep. that. I think that covers all of them. I think so. I think we did it. Okay. Other business. Do we have any other business this evening? I have two. You and I have to report out on our meeting with Jim Oponis of Park and Rec, Alex Sanders from uh, David, I mean, from uh, Peter Ford's building, mm -hmm. and um, the two of us, and we met down uh, to look at finding a solution to cover the, the propane tanks, and we looked at fencing, and I emailed you a sketch um, of what we had talked about so the board could see. We were looking at um, a gate on the parking lot side, of the, t of the tanks closest to the lake and then run a 16-foot fence that would go right into the bushes, then have the bushes and then come in front of the four white tanks with an eight-foot fence, then have a gap and then put another eight-foot fence which would help cover the electric panels. I am sorry to say, and we met with Lakes Region Fencing, mm -hmm. we thought we had it all set up that we would get a, um, estimate and, and a design of what they were going to do. He gave us the uh, time in early June, and then Jim Oponis got an email from the owner of Lakes Region Fencing and said that he was not going to be willing to do uh, the fencing that he had during our conversation that Alex Sanders had pulled him aside and said that he wanted to know the material um, that he was going to use because Alex uh, felt that they, that Peter Ford uh, would install it himself. And with that, the owner of Lakes Region Fencing withdrew. He said he is a, um, usually does residential properties he doesn't like to get into conflicts, and he felt that this was going to, there was opportunity for having, people having differing opinions. So we're back to ground zero. Um, Jim Oponis, who is the head maintenance person for Park and Rec, has put this all together. Um, and when he gets back from vacation, he's going to try to find another fencer. I happen to have my next door neighbor has a fence company, but they're in Florida for a while. Um, I don't know if they'll be back by May, June, or whatnot, but I can reach out to them and see if they'd be willing to do it. I also emailed, and you probably saw it, a alternative fence plan, um, because I figure if we're going to cover the tanks and then go to the bush and then cover the next tanks and then go into the corner, we should just continue it instead of doing three quarters of a job. Um, I know we're in a default year, and I know that there may not be money, but it's something that we should consider. And um, instead of just breaks in the fence, have a couple of gates in the, in the fence area, because I would rather not see little children and dogs and everything running 
in between the openings and the gates and playing behind the gates and playing where we have tanks and where we have electrical panels and everything, where then they become out of the view of parents and other people. So I think if we're going to do it, we need to do it right and we need to do it safely. Um, and the other thing would be if, if Peter Ford's crew does want to do it, I would be open to seeing a plan from them with materials and a definitive date and contract with them as if they were a fence company with stipulations that they perform and get it done in, in, a, in a specific period of time. But they haven't even contacted or talked to us. So yeah. he just got that letter. Sure. Paul. So, um, so I saw the, uh, the document from Jim that was the proposed fence sketch. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that was uh, a solid piece of work. One of our colleagues thinks it probably fell short. I don't think it fell short. Um, how about we do this? How about we send a letter to Peter Ford and says, here's the, uh, here's the proposed uh, solution. Just get back to us with a bill of materials and a date certain as to when you're going to install this. Well, but How about we, we just do it that way and just well because we didn't see one of the things that the Lakes Region um, fencing company was going to show us examples of the types of fence that we could put in. I think we do care how the fence looks and no, what I agree. material it is. So um, I guess th that we could tell them there and and that we w would need to approve. Yeah, there was also some when we met with the gentleman there from the fence company. Uh, talking about the gates there and stuff, he had some very good points on how and where to hang the gate mm -hmm. so that it doesn't um, bring the rest of the fence, you know, yeah. have it start wobbling and, you know, start yeah, deteriorating, yeah. Not deteriorating, but, you know, I get, the rest I get, of the fence in, in, in I guess my point is a lot of hard work's been so done here, Brett. Put the fence in a situation where it could fail yeah. on us and stuff. So right. there's something to be said for a company that just does that um, as opposed to if we have, you know, somebody that, you know, business owner just got to go out there and put a fence up, then right. within two or three years we might have parts of it start failing and stuff, whereas if a professional does it, it's, you know, they're going to have the know-how and the, yeah. every, this, you know, my, the my history point, there to make it yeah, solid. My point, is, and I, I, my point is, I think we're talking amongst ourselves, maybe what we need to do is put it out to uh, Mr. Ford and say, Here's the proposed design. Get back to us with a bill of materials, including, you know, what the construction thing. We'll approve it, and then you can install it. Just move forward. You know, I don't care either way. We can do it that way. The reason ours only did this one section, because we were to meet with the representative from the Ford bill, and he and they need to pay for it. We only dealt with their section. Right. You know, I don't have any issue with um, Brian's drawing, and we may want to put more fencing up there. But that wasn't the, the job that Brad and I were sent out by Correct. the Board of Selectmen to do. We did what we were supposed right. to do in trying to get a, an agreement between Peter Ford's representative, right. Alexander, and the Board of Selectmen. And I thought we had it. I so I, I'm, I'm disappointed that we don't. If we want to send a letter and, and to Peter Ford, w he was supposed to get back to us with a landscaping plan, mm -hmm. and it, it took forever, and it was subpar. So I, that's why we kind of took the ball and if ran I, with it. If I, um, yeah, Paul? So, I, I, Linda, I absolutely agree. I mean, I'm, I, think, I think what my colleague here is suggesting um, is, is a more robust solution, but it doesn't sound like that was the remit in the first place. So um, it sounds like you have, at least the two of you think it's a good idea. You probably have one more vote that thinks it's a good idea. And the only thing that's left to be done here is to ask Mr. Ford uh, to come back with a bill of materials, a date certain, um, so that we can look at it and then we'll approve it and he can put it in. Or we can go get another quote. Or we go get another quote. But yeah. I, it yeah. just feels to me like we're, well, we, exactly. we gotta, That's what we, we got to get it out there to him and let yeah. him take the next step. And when does Jim Opponis come back? Is he back next week? Or? I believe that's correct. I, I mean, I can reach out to Alex tomorrow to say, where are we at on yeah. this? And yeah. how do you intend to get across the finish line with this project? Yeah. 
and see what he has to say. And I got a funny feeling he's going to be coming in front of the board next Wednesday anyways. Yep. On the other item. On yep. the temporary fencing. Yep. Well, he, here's another thing. I don't think we um, do a new lease for those tanks Correct. until he's done this. Well, well, this is the kind we yeah, just no, get it yep. rolling on down. And, you know, I think we still have the issue with them pulling their trash cans out on town property, mm. not just to dump them, but to fill them. Mm. So, um, and we have the CO2 tank. And we have the CO2 tank. The CO2 tank that also. they've it's never gotten permission for. It is not part for. of the license agreement. But that's all separate from the conversation about, here's a proposal for the fence. We'd like you to come back to us with a bill of materials and a date certain. We'll approve it, you pay for it, and get it in. All, the other stuff, which I've I was respectfully, I've, I've seen and, and watched on TV. Those are important items, but it, 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 is that on the critical path to get the fence installed? Well, I was responding to uh, oh, Jim, Jim saying yeah, yeah. he okay. was going to be here on the April 17th, yeah. oh. and we can wait and then to have it, or we can have a discussion before he arrives on the 18th, and that's why I responded. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Anything else on this? Do you need a motion to... to or anything there? No? I don't think so. Oh, well, I think we do need a consensus on how we're going to move forward. Um, Jim was going to talk to uh, Alex. Jim. Um, Alex. Jim was going to talk to yeah. Alex, and we should find out where Jim Oponis was because he was yeah. going to look for him. And we also have the um, option of doing a letter. So we're going to propose both of those options to Alex, and do we want to give them a date certain that they need to get back? Because if we don't give a date certain... Well, and, and frankly, what I'll do when Jim Oponis gets back, I'll have him get somebody in here as a fence company to look at it to factor it, cost out what it's going to cost to build fence A or fence B, and then you guys have some leverage for negotiations of his renewal for his contract for the propane tanks. So I think it'd be worth keeping this on bring it back on next week's agenda, get whatever information we can by that time, and continue what the discussion. I can do. Okay. I, I think that's a, that's a generous thing for us to do, but we're doing the work Mr. Ford should be doing. We should tell him, what, but that's fine. I'm, I'm supportive of whatever you want to do. I think the, what I saw from you folks appears to be consistent with what you've said you needed to get done. So you've got at least three of us. That so what my intention is, I will reach out to Mr. Ford, or Alex rather, and say, can you give me a bill of materials and a date certain of what you're proposing and get me a draft of what that looks like for the board to discuss hopefully on next Wednesday. And if that doesn't go well, then I can direct Jim Oponis to get somebody in to size up two separate fences. Um, based on the first sketch provided, then the second sketch provided, yeah. and get cost estimates for said fences, and then the board can make a decision what they want to do. And I'd like to give um, Alex the date of uh, the first week in June, because that's what we had with Lakes Region Fencing. We even had a date he would have it installed by, so we have to have right. a date right. when it all needs to be completed. Yep. Okay. I have one more. Sure. Yeah, I got um, an email today um, from the town of Wolfboro talking about the South Main Street water replacement project, and it was giving notice that they have scheduled a meeting on April 15th at 6 p.m. in the Great Hall Town Hall. Stantec and the Department of Public Works will be present to discuss the overall scope of the project and answer questions that you may have. So anybody so listening or in here, this may be something you would like to come to. So, so PSA. I, I have a couple of things. Um, the New Hampshire Municipal Association um, forwarded me a webinar. It's an hour and 12 minutes, and it's on um, how to operate under a default budget. Hmm. They said that we could also reach out to them um, after viewing the webinar with questions and concerns if we have any. I think that um, it might be prudent if we scheduled a meeting, a public meeting, Board of Selectmen, and we watched the webinar for an hour and 12 minutes, it's not a long time, um, and let the public participate if they want to watch also, and let them forward us questions that we can go to the New Hampshire Municipal Association with. 
Um, this hasn't happened in the town since 2005, and I think it's a, it would be a good thing for us to do. I, you know, I th I, Brian had uh, talked to me about it, and I've been giving some thought. And I went back to the presentation the Municipal Association gave to the Budget Committee in 2000. In 22, and it went right down yep. through the budgeting. You know, and I've been to many seminars. Every time I am involved in in one of those, I learn something new. Mm -hmm. And so, I think it's a good idea for us to educate ourselves mm -hmm. and allow the public to understand the same things and be educated. So, I would support having a meeting if other members of the board are willing to come in and and uh, take part in that. Mm. And I would like our town manager and our finance director there because I think they can answer a bunch of the questions for us anyhow. Hmm. Yeah. This question I got, Brian, is that webinar at a, at a date and time certain right now? No, or is we, it, we have it. We can, we can play use it, it at any time okay. it that suits us. Yep. Gotcha. We it up. Okay. So I think right now we could just leave this for right now and let Jim maybe get back to us after he talks to KC and see if there's a time that can work for, yeah. for us and then we can post it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I could just, Brad? Yes, Paul. So I want to chip in on this. So I, I spent a year um, last year on the budget committee and uh, we had a, um, a couple of uh, these events and in-person types of uh, things. And it was very interesting, and, and, and I don't say that with a tongue in my cheek, it was very interesting that even members of the Budget Committee who've been there for 20 plus years, you know, a little, little light bulb went on and said, oh, I didn't know that. So I think that's right. I think what Brian's suggesting makes sense, um, that we, uh, we, we all ought to keep ourselves refreshed on, uh, especially the financial aspects of our town um, and the rules we have to play by. I think that's important. Um, I have another one. I said, uh, I think that we should evaluate any leases coming up in 2024, and I think that we should um, follow the lead of one of our citizens and create a spreadsheet in, um, so that we have all the leases for th that the town has with pertinent information listed so that we know where we are and they can be referenced uh, quickly. Um, because... Uh, some of them can be kind of interesting. Um, the one for with the Chamber of Commerce and the um, railroad building can be very, very confusing when you look at it. So I think it would be something that if we did create a spreadsheet for that, we would have something at our fingers. Then as we update our leases every year, we can just put in new information and, and, and have everything current. Um, I was also hoping for a follow-up on our town ice rental revenue. Um, just wanted to see how much revenue we receive for the amount of ice that we as a town pay for based on um, free skating, public skating, um, stick practice, and all those other things that, that we uh, supply. Um, I also contacted um, the town of Meredith and the town of Laconia today. I'm waiting for Laconia to get back to me. Um, I was looking at landing fees, and um, I found out a lot of interesting things. The Mount Washington over in Meredith pays for the maintenance of their dock. They've actually paid to rebuild their dock and for the dock that the Mount lands and comes out of, but they don't pay a landing fee. Um, they don't allow any commercial use on their docks at all, although they said that they think that it happens without their knowing. And it's something that they're looking at addressing. Um, so they handle things a little bit differently than we do. I, I went to them because I was looking to see if there is a way that we can make sure that our landing fees and um, whatnot are in line with others around the lake. And I think I'm gonna find out that everybody does it a little different. Mm. And so um, they do still do the same thing that we do, a, a two hour window. Mm. They also um, have somebody sit and collect money, $20 for a launch fee at their um, public launch when they have the availability of having an employee there. Mm. Um, so I found that interesting too. 
The, the Mount Washington, um, I think it was about 1996, when we rebuilt the docks, they used to own it, and nobody could land there or do anything. When the town rebuilt the docks, we rebuilt the docks to have control over that yeah. dock and not run into issues of people uh, parking at the uh, Mount Washington docks. Um, and I can say very clearly that because that was a bonded issue, there we can't restrict the usage to a singular provider. So we have to be able to open that up because it was a bonded issue. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, so uh, that was a lot, and thanks for that. Um, the, um, the issue on uh, ICE utilization and revenues, that's gonna get discussed on, is that getting discussed next week? Yep, you will have yeah. um, your, your finance report and we are tagging uh, onto that finance report, the Pop Whalen usage report um, and projections based yeah. on what you received at the last finance report mm -hmm. and input we received from the board to amend mm -hmm. the document. We've amended that, met mm -hmm. with Chuck yesterday, yeah. um, and we've got that put together. Um, we do anticipate continuing needs for tweaks to that report, but I think we're getting closer yeah. to capturing what the board is looking for. Just for the benefit of uh, my colleague, I, I copied Brad as chairperson. I sent a note over to Jim three, four weeks ago when I first came aboard, and I said, I'd, I'd, like, to just, I'd like to just see the path to break even uh, for the Pop Whalen. Simple ask. Now, simple ask, hard to do, but I just want to see that path uh, because we know, uh, based upon uh, what we saw last month, that uh, on a pro forma basis, uh, the Pop Whalen was, um, I think, 175,000 with brackets around it. Um, so I, I, I just wanted to see that path. On the, uh, on the other thing that uh, was mentioned, um, I, I, I read, the, uh, read the spreadsheet that, that you referenced, and I, I, asked, um, I asked Amy, to make sure that we, we understand from a citation point of view what is an asset, because the, the numbers are a little, um, they're on the books, uh, but what is an asset? And an, and an asset in our town is a piece of property, uh, or it's cash. Um, and the good news is, uh, I, don't know whether, I don't know where we go with the default budget or not, but um, we're gonna be reevaluating town properties and town proper, uh, uh, properties in the town, and town buildings get, get uh, be a party to that. So um, um, that'll be good, because then we'll have a policy conversation that says we know what the asset values are, we know what we think we need to charge for rent, we know what the market rate is, and if we de decide we want to change, discount, whatever the right words are, we can do that. But I think that's good clarity uh, for people. I think it'll help. And I was thinking that one of the things we needed to do on our work plan is to look at our fees and the last time yeah. we changed them. I mean, we hit a huge inflation yeah, um, and I think we probably have fees that are lower than they should be, and that we should put that. We may want to get um, do a work plan and check off those things we want to accomplish this year. I think the spreadsheet was a little long, and there was some things on it that might not be pertinent to what we need to look at quickly as a town. One of them was the asset value because I didn't know how that played into. Um, what we charge for a lease. Um, I think it's, if, if you go that route, start melding it with an asset value, then um, you, you might be looking at lease rates that don't make any sense. Well, you can always discount them. What you really want to know is what the value of your house is. Then you can figure out whether you want to rent it for $9,000 a month or 50 bucks. So you can, you can make the management decision to do the discounting, but you really want to know what the asset value is. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Any other, other business this evening? Mm -hmm. Okay. Seeing none, we'll go into committee reports. We'll start down there with Brian. So um, I had an EDC um, subcommittee on housing, and it was our first meeting. We're trying to put together a, a statement on what the EDC how they want to focus on um, the housing crisis in Wolfboro, which is, we know, in the state and in the country. Um, I had a Heritage Commission meeting tonight where we discussed the Heritage Awards and the ceremony that will be coming forward, I believe, on May 29th. 
and I have a police, an EDC, and a sidewalk meeting all in the next four or five days. Thank you, Brian. Paul, any committee meetings yet? I ain't, I ain't had no committee meetings. Okay, Linda. Thank you. Yeah, I met with the town planner, CEI, and members of the Russ Pond Association and looked at the 319 grant and changes that need to be made uh, to that grant, um, grant, it's the grant itself, um, because of the beaver dams blew out, so we're going to do some different things yeah. there. So that's moving. Um, uh, I went up to a Wolfboro Waters assessing subcommittee meeting, and we're working on ways to measure uh, the stream and the amount of nutrients that are coming in through the different streams. Mm. And the reason we're trying to do that is so that we can make sure if we're going to do a um, best management plan, we're doing it on a stream that's causing the most nutrients getting into the lake. So we're working on that. Um, I went to a library trustees meeting, and then Brad and I met with the uh, people for the Kate Park fencing. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, as Linda, as you said, I met with her down at uh, Kate Park regarding the fence along the property there to screen off the propane tanks. And last week, we were able to sneak in the planning board meeting before the storm hit. So that was it for me. Dave? Done. None, just sunny Florida last week? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Town manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last week, we had a kickoff for the asset management software um, program. Uh, so that launched prior to our storm. Uh, as you're well aware, we had a storm last week. Um, I just would like to give some kudos to the Municipal Electric Department. Um, they were able to secure outside line crews. Uh, they began arriving in town on Thursday around 5 p.m. Uh, we had our two crews from Wolfboro. We had uh, two tree crews in town, one our normal tree crew and one from Massachusetts. We had a line crew from South Hadley, Mass. We had a line crew from Ipswich, Mass, and we had a line crew from Holden, Mass. We also secured a drilling team because some of the poles that were um, destroyed as a result of the storm required drilling. Uh, so MED was able to secure a drilling team that was able to drill through ledge for placement of poles. Uh, the crews worked 16-hour days. They were put up in a local facility and they went back to work uh, after eight hours of rest. Uh, so I'd like to thank the staff at MED. Um, they put in a significant amount of hours, and I know there was some people who had some extended outages, um, but at the end of the day, I think they did an outstanding job at keeping um, the lights on for the majority of people, and as well, keeping their staff safe which is important. With that said, same thing to Department of Public Works. Um, there was obviously snow accumulation issues which took place. It was very hard to plow that snow um, given the fact that the roads had already softened up significantly uh, and the fact that we had significant amount of tree debris and um, lines down in the roadway. Uh, positive note on that, um, when uh, that week we received the new skid steer with the grapple on it, which was invaluable in removing uh, brush as they were cutting it up, getting it loaded onto trucks. Also during the storm, um, we suffered a water line break where we were losing approximately 400,000 gallons of water a day. Uh, they were able to find that leak uh, and I believe they got that repaired. Uh, Friday night into uh, Sunday morning, uh, which was on Dudley Road. Additionally, our emergency management uh, thanked them for uh, opening up a warming shelter for our citizens in town. Um, wasn't heavily attended, but it was here. Um, and I think the reason it wasn't heavily attended was MED did a great job at keeping the lights on. Um, right now, we're waiting to see if there's a disaster declaration. 
Um, we know that this storm is going to be very pricey to us. Um, so we are tracking all those costs and we do anticipate that disaster declaration and submitting for uh, federal funds once that happens. Uh, that buttons up the storm. Uh, the default budget, the default budget is on the town website. If you go to the town website on the home page, um, you'll see a, a tab that says 2024 uh, assigned default budget. If you open that up, it'll have the default budget that was signed by the Board of Selectmen in January of 20, January 29th of this year. Um, and then you will see the thumbnail budget. Uh, that thumbnail budget outlines what the 2023 budget was, what the 2024 department had asked was, what the 2024 um, budget committee budget was, and then what the actual default budget is. So you're able to go in there and see what your default budget looks like. Um, do anticipate as we continue to move through the year, uh, line item transfers, which will take place um, as a result of the storm is a good example. We're gonna have to do some line item transfers as we move through the year. Um, with that said, uh, that's the bulk of what I have. At this point, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next on the agenda, questions from the press. Do we have Alyssa with us? Hi, Brad. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Okay. Public input, limited to three minutes per person. Do we have some people here? Want to make any comments or questions? Jody. My name is Jody Burson. I just got a quick question. Um, who is managing Pop Whalen now? Are we, does the town still own Pop Whalen or does the friends of Pop Whalen, Victor Druin and Kurt the Builder, who, who, who is running Pop Whalen? Who is managing Pop Whalen? I, I might have heard Brian wrong but I, I sounded like he was trying to, you gotta wait to hit, to find out financials on that or no? Can you get financials at any, any time on that? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I asked for a financial that had never been done before. Okay. So now they have to create it. Okay. Is, but, so they don't keep a running record of what happened not, not all every, through the winter? Not, not every single <laughs> item, I mean. Like, yeah. your, like your budget for your business or your budget for your home, I could yeah. ask for something that you don't check. Do you, do, you, do you actually follow exactly what your grocery bill is for the entire year by the month or the week? No. Oh, you know no, that. But, if you're in the business and you're managing but I it, could, but I could ask you have you, the records and yeah. you... you I could ask you and yeah. I could say, Jody, what do you, what's, your, yeah. what's your budget for the week, month, year total for your groceries? You'd have to yeah. go home and you'd have to figure it out. Okay. That's, that's but I guess my main question was who is actually managing the town uh, of Wolfboro. The, the town of Wolfboro was managing Pop Whalen yes. and everything. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Jody. Thanks, Jody. Oh, God. Hi, Bobby Budman. Um, I'll be brief. First, uh, Paul, nice cup. Brian, nice cup. So you brought your own. Um, I just have a couple things uh, back to your handbook when you were discussing the handbook. Paul, thank you for bringing up that we should have public input again at the beginning of the meeting. There are a lot of things that are not opened to citizens getting up here mm. and maybe actually helping educate our elected leaders for how they will vote that evening. So I, I would like you to revisit that if you possibly could. While you're there, I would like you also to, I know I've done this behind the scenes for probably 10 years in a row now, but I'm going to make it um, public this year. Um, we have language in our handbook and how our board perceives every week that is not inclusive language. And I think it's time to change our language in our handbook and how the board proceeds. In August, on August 10th of 2008, our state made it very, they made it very aware in statutory construction, section 2128, that all select boards select persons. Um, the language for selectmen can be altered in 
state code. And I know, Linda, we have had conversations mm -hmm. that you have said it is not in state code. It is in state code. It's Chapter 21, Statutory, Section 2128. In, in words, select woman, select person, and select board may be used interchangeably with selectmen in all instances where appropriate. Most of the towns now in our state have switched over to having select board and select members, and they have, they have moved away from chairman, vice chairman, or chair guy, as Paul said earlier this evening. So I'm going to hope you'll revisit your handbook and switch over to inclusive language that most of the state is using. The other thing I wanted to discuss tonight, I've been up here before and we've talked about PSI plastics and we've talked about PFAS and PFOS and the fact that our town has never checked our water. Well, as of today, there is a federal mandate mm -hmm. to check our water for PFAS and PFOS. And I know that's a concern of many of us citizens. We have PSI plastics out there that we don't know what they're putting down the drain that is leaking back into our water supply. Right now, New Hampshire is set to receive $10 million for the endeavor of upgrading your water if you do have a PFAS and PFAS problem. So I really hope that we take these polyalkylides seriously and we test before the two years are up so we can jump on some of that $10 million grant funding if we do have a problem. Better safe than sorry. Thanks. Thank you. So um, Slide, which is a company that um, specializes in chemicals for plastic manufacturing, um, actually was um, one of the resources that I saw when I just read about the new EPA regulation. And the EPA is going to have a regulation now that we have to test mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. for PFAS. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that it's only um, four parts per trillion is what they're putting for a number for testing, because that's all technically we can test for at this time with our scientific methods. And they do say that at 0.04 um, parts per trillion is when it can actually start being harmful to people that are sensitive to it. So um, um. I, I agree that maybe we, we do um, have to see what kind, and I know we've asked GI plastics before, but let's just make sure that they're using best practices and that um, the, the watershed around them, because they are in kind of a, a wet area, is, is clean. No. Yeah, I think it'd be very easy, easy to find out from PSI Plastics. I think they have to have a handbook and yeah. ha exactly what they ha are using yeah. in terms of chemicals. I think they're required, and I think we can get a copy of that if yeah. we ask and can find that out. I, I believe at one of our tours, because we went twice, that they did say that they weren't using PFAS. That's what the, they said, the, but if we get the book yeah. and we get that, we can rest assured people can feel comfortable about it. And I, th I think yeah. we can also test fairly easily, because I do believe, being that that's the site of our old dump up there behind, right behind them, we have monitoring wells, I would believe, right in there that are being monitored. So well, we can access to do some testing yep. would be uh, fairly easy on our end. So anyway, thank you. Thanks, brother. Derek. Good evening, everybody. Derek Brown, Libby Street. Um, I wanted to give you a handout. I'll speak briefly about it at the end as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Okay, a um, little bit of research this week. Um, I'll start um, with uh, a relatively fluid uh, handout here. Um, I wanted to start off by publicly apologizing to Terry Tavares and Amy Capone Muccio. And here I'm gonna define what I mean by that. I was in the office this week and, and I think this is important to take the time that everybody needs to listen keenly to this because it's been misrepresented. I went up and, as usual, Terry was her stellar self helping provide me with information of what I've come to expect. 
And once she provided me the information, she said, do you have a moment? I have a question for you. And I said, please, anything I can do. Maybe, maybe it's nothing. And she said, well, Mr. Brown, we've all been watching these presentations, keenly interested. And you talk a lot about the planning department. Um, I work for the planning department. Does that mean I've done something wrong that I could do better? That was the response. That was a question she wanted to ask me. Well, first off, I was flabbergasted because, well, first off, I said, you're kidding, right? I mean, you've been everything helpful, kind, courteous, professional, and so on. So it led me to say, yeah, I wanted to start tonight by saying, my gosh, Terry, if I haven't said it before, I'm gonna say it now, you do a stellar job. And if it wasn't for you, there's nothing good I could say about the planning department. And I hope I'm clear on that point. And I hold the same respect and feeling for Amy Capone Muccio. Very helpful person for getting information timely, asking questions, what they can do to help. I can't speak the same for the rest of the town management department that I've had to deal with in terms of getting timely information. Now, I'm gonna give a specific example because I'd like your input, please. I'm, this is without a net. So if I'm up here and I register a complaint at this podium and I submit a, a written document, it was my understanding that goes to the person in charge of writing the minutes to be submitted and recorded. Is that true or did I do that improperly? Could somebody field that question for me? How is that done? If I give you a thing that says, this is a complaint I'd like to file, and I hand it to the board, does that, am I incorrect in assuming that gets handed to the right person to get recorded? I would assume so, that it would be. Okay. That, that is, so that's proper. It, it, am I okay? Great. So here's my question. On March 6th, I handed out six copies. Every one of you that was here, Mr. Senecal, you weren't here. And mysteriously, none of them made it to Amy's desk. None of them. Not one. But Amy was kind enough and conscientious enough to reach me on her Saturday to say, Mr. Brown, I reviewed what you spoke about and you handed a document to people. I don't have it. It's not been given to me by anyone. And didn't you want that recorded? So I said, well, absolutely I did. Can I send you a copy? And she greatly received it and published it. But what I'm getting at is it's kind of scary what slips through the cracks and what should be a very simple task. Was it deliberate? I don't know. But it didn't make it there on its own, and it should have been a pretty easy thing to happen, and it didn't. And that's our responsibility. Now, if I could do something different, please let me know, and I'd be happy to do it. Now, this brings me to the climate of change. Some elected officials this week have said to me they wanted to know the name of the town. They wanted me to be specific and name town employee names of people that town people had problems with when they tried to register a complaint that retribution happened from. And I politely said, no, I'm not going to give you those names because quite frankly, it's none of their business. It's none of my business. I'm out of that. I'm not here to in indict people. But what I am here to say is the problem starts right here. It's the climate we talked about two weeks ago. A lot of these things, I've, I mean, I see Ms. Blodgett, I see other people here in this room that represent a lot of people with concerns. And I don't care how thorough you are with your concerns trying to improve things so that the town does a better job. If they're not followed in the town management and planning departments, you can be as thorough as you want. They're not followed. And there's plenty of selective reaction to that going on to this very day. Specifically, no documentation. I spent Monday morning going through past and current permits in the planning department. Again, Terry was very helpful, give me anything I asked for. And here's the scary situation. There is no documentation in the town of Wolfboro that you can rely on. The typical response I get is that person no longer works here. Well, what if I want to find, 
well, that person isn't here either. Well, there must be a plan. There must be a document. No. So what I did is I dug further. I find certificates of occupancy. I see final inspections that have a signature that's illegible with nothing checked off. You don't know what was inspected. There's nothing you could hold anybody accountable for to say this was done. It's blank. And it's through the files. So I ask you, regarding the planning director, we have a problem here. And when I sent an email to some of you guys, Mr. Pinio, Mr. Harriman, which I did multiple requests on, there was a specific reason I was asking that question. Because this has got to be handled by the planning director, the town manager, or specifically the planning director. It shouldn't be dumped on the junior code enforcement officer that's trying to learn and doesn't know what questions he should be asking. He's trying to be helpful. I do, I do sincerely believe that. But you're putting this in his lap, and he's completely unqualified at this point to handle. But you have the right people to handle it, but it's not being handled. So now we're left with some people are held to the letter of the law, depending on who you're popular with, and other ones, it's a blank document with a signature. This is how building permits are done in this town. This is what leads to people wanting to appeal, and I'm gonna quote Mr. O'Brien from a couple of weeks ago, if this kept going this way with appeals, the town could hold, the townspeople could hold the town accountable or hostage. No, you could jam up the town is what I said. And you know what, that's exactly what they're gonna do because unfortunately, the system is not trusted to be followed. You have the rules and you have the guidelines. You're choosing not to follow them or you're choosing where to follow them and where not to. So that is unfortunately the cold hard truth. Now I wanna end on something just so everybody is aware, and again, this is not a, it's not a real fancy document. It's meant to, to illustrate something that will be meaningless outside of this meeting. Um, the first page for everybody is the meeting of September, of, excuse me, of March 20th. What this represents is the view count on YouTube the first night of the meeting. And watch how it climbs as days go on. Nobody's talking about this. People are, there's nothing on social media, just words getting out. People are watching, they're listening. Now, specifically, page two. And again, this doesn't seem like that big a deal, but specifically, when you get to March 31st, what the heck is that? Well, that was a spike in viewership because somebody posted a ZBA meeting agenda on social media. And somebody in that, again, not me or anybody I know, mentioned, hey, you know, if you're going to that meeting, you should go check out that thing that happened on the 20th before you go to that meeting. That's what that spike is. That's people going looking and researching. Then the next one of, Mar of April 3rd, I said GSN. I didn't even know that article was coming. I didn't know such a thing existed on the Granite State News. That spike is the result of somebody read the paper and said, there's something going on there. So people are listening. People are watching. I commend you on putting your website with emails up there. That's great. For the first time, they're all there. That's great. It's a start. It's a positive direction but we gotta lean into it because they are watching, they're not happy, and this is the time to shine. Any questions from anybody? You got a lot of looks of thought in your face there, Mr. O'Brien. You got something to say, no? Okay. Hey. Everybody have a good night. Thank you, Derek. Anybody else for public input this evening? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to go into uh, non-public. So moved. Second. All yes. those in favor? Yes, Aye. yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.